G'day my friends, Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden with Nature Does the Work Podcast 2 and today we're talking about bees, yes, introducing bees to the garden, attracting bees to the garden and my thoughts on bees, your thoughts on bees in the comments down below and what we can do to help them because as we know around the globe, bees they're suffering, man. Like, there's too many pesticides around. There's too much monoculturing. There's, like, less clover and things. We're pulling down, ripping down trees, all that type of stuff. Now, I know many of you are getting excited about this and going, we are getting smashed. The world has a big problem. Now, there are people out there with solutions, and I don't have all the answers. But what I do have is answers for you guys to bring more bees around to your place. Now, there are other types of pollinating insects, right? Ants will pollinate, moths will pollinate, anything that crawls across the flower, hits the stamen and sort of moves on to the, and, and hits the female part of the plant. So the male part of the plant, the pollen, and then touches the female part of the plant, that will pollinate. And some plants will self-pollinate themselves. but Bees play such a big role. They're a part of the whole insect world, right? And we need them. And when there's no bees around, I think I feel, well, I don't think I feel, I know I'm a little bit more sad. I'm like, when are the bees coming back, man? When's it going to warm up? And yesterday we had a 24 degree day here, warmer than usual. The bees were out and they're on my big broccoli flower. And I was just, I was absolutely stoked to see one. Now, I know they're going to come back in forces in this spring, but I don't have enough flowers around. So we need to plant more beautiful flowers. Now, they seem to like blues and pinks around those colours. They love herbs, fragrant herbs. They love sunflowers. So the more flowers that we can put in our garden, edible ones as well, like, you know, you've got the, what's the garlic society, unreal brings bees and pollinators in, you can eat the flowers. Marigolds, you can eat the flowers. Nasturtiums, you can eat the flowers. There's all these types of plants we can bring edibles in. You can also eat the flowers of rocket and different types, you know, like rocket arugula, all the brassica family, things like that. And by introducing more bee pollinating flowers, such as herbs, and lots of veggies and things like that and just building it up. Now what we want to do is we want to plant some evergreen trees. So some trees that will flower every year and have them in our little tiny permaculture zone. Now you might only need a couple of little trees, you've only got a little space. Now I planted a lemon myrtle, it's an Australian native. It flowers, really beautiful white flowers over the Christmas period, the summer period here. And I'm slowly putting in other natives that will bring bees in, such as grevilleas and things like that. So what you need to do is you need to have some flowering plants that are local, indigenous to your area, that you can grow either in pots or in the ground. And then you need a nice array of herbs that grow year round, depending on your season of where you are, and try and find seasonal flowers that are flowering at different times. Now, while we're talking about bees, flowering plants do a lot more than just feed bees. They actually bring in the beneficial insects. Now beneficial insects are really important in the garden and having these flowers and habitat around is a part of it because a lot of these beneficials actually feed on the pollen or they hide under the leaves where these flowering plants are waiting for like a little sap sucking plant, oh, sap sucking plant, <laughs> sap sucking insect to come along and bam hits it and then something like, uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, praying mantis, bang, he sits there all quiet, you know, and he's got himself a feed. Things like that, you know, we're providing habitat. And by providing plants for bees, we're also providing plants for other insects to come in and colonize in our garden. And once we get the balance right, and we start getting the insects, the birds, the frogs, the little lizards, all those type of things, all in harmony, nature does the work for us. All right, so hope you're enjoying these podcasts, these video podcasts, and I'm inspiring you, giving some tips and tricks to get going and get growing. Now, you can watch the channel called 18Bs, just type it in into YouTube or online, 
and he does wild bees in hives if you want to learn more about bees. I'm far from a bee expert, but I want them in my garden so they can do the work for me. All right, I'll see you at the next video and video podcast real soon. Have a great day. Happy everything. Bless you all. And bye for now.